today? Good, great. How are you? Great. How practice going? It was good. It's been good. It's been uh, practice has been good for the last many weeks. You know, I heard Coach Frost talk. So it was good today. Yeah. Hey, Scott was saying Monday that Adrian had one of his better games, even though it might not have looked like it. What? That's you know what? It, it was interesting when I looked at the tape. You know, he the beginning of the game he was I think trying to do a little too much. You know. I knew from when the game started and what the weather was going to be like that most of what we were going to talk about was just keeping him from getting frustrated. You know, because those those games are tough on everybody, but particularly for a quarterback when you're trying to, when you're trying to throw the ball, and going freaking end over end, man, it, it can get frustrating. So when we were talking on the phone, it was, hey, don't get frustrated. Things are going to happen. It's, our defense is playing out of their minds. It's going to come down to maybe the last few seconds of the game. And in the second half, he did a, as good a job as I've been around making really, really good decisions in a tough situation. Games like that, do you just tell them not to, don't try to do too much? Well, you know, it was that thing we had talked about for the last four or five weeks. That's been kind of the theme from game to game. Just do your job, you know. And I could just tell in the first half he was – he was doing things that were, I will not necessarily say out of character, but I hadn't seen before. So we talked at halftime and kind of regrouped ourselves and said, hey, just make sure you let everybody do their job, you do yours, it'll all work out. We talked about the fact that regardless of the weather, it was going to be a tough game, right? And it was. And then in addition to the weather, it was just going to be a, a, one of those kind of games, you know, it was going to be ugly. and. So, hey, this is what we wanted. This is what we knew was going to happen. Let's go out and get it done. So, yeah. What do you want your, What do you want a quarterback to take away from a game like that when, it, when you, you know going in that it's going to be ugly and it's not going to be a ton of points? The, the biggest thing is, is it, it, it's, it's probably a, a microcosm of the entire season as a quarterback. For example, we, you know, you, you don't want to get too high and you don't want to get too low during the course of the game. The time to get pissed off at yourself is after the game. The time to celebrate is after the game. When the game's going on, stay emotionless and steely-eyed, and we talked about that during the course of the game, and it's the same thing with the season. The, the time to get irritated or whatever, really excited about things, or when the game's over against Iowa, we'll, we'll, we'll sit and talk and evaluate and see where we are and see how we feel about it. I think that's what they can, a quarterback can take away from a game like that. So I've heard more than one player say, as long as Adrian is around, we're going to be fine. Does that seem like when I hear it, I always think it's a lot for a freshman. As long as he's around? Yeah. As long as he's playing? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I have tremendous confidence in all the guys you know in our room. Yeah, you know, and I, I, I get that. Uh, I, feel, I feel really good about the fact that over the course of our time here, God willing, it's lengthy, um, that we'll always have uh, – a good quarterback. Speaking of Iowa, um, how much is, he's not going to tell us this, but how much does game do you mean to Eric Schneider? <laughs> well, I don't want to put words in his mouth now, no, so I'm, if he's I'm not going to. your own perception. From my perspective? Yeah. Oh, I think for any any young guy that's coaching, going back to his alma mater as a competitor, I think that obviously always has sort of an extra sort of little flavor to it, you know? So he hasn't said, I mean, chins is chins. He's, he's been just like he always is. I, I haven't noticed any change in him at all with regards to going into this week. But I would suspect that maybe uh, it's a little different for him. Uh, it was a, just a, a particular question. There was a ball that Adrian threw to the left side going with the wind on Saturday. And yeah. it, looked, it got tipped at the line. And it looked like the linebacker had him picked if the if the if it wouldn't have got batted down did yeah. he was there someone else in that progression that yeah there was there was actually two guys on that twix route and um i was thinking that maybe it was going to be a touchdown that's for for you go for, yeah for us yeah, yeah but it got tipped in a way to go yeah so hey did you watch the game last night the high school game no the NFL game. no who played <laughs> Rams. You did not watch that game. Oh, 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 the, the, oh well, I saw a little bit, but it was like 59 to 44 or something crazy like that. I got to see bits and pieces, so we were 
like kind of game plan okay. and stuff. Well, well I would have a question I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like now that the NFL is starting to embrace, I mean, they do different offense, obviously. Yeah. What Rangers, they do, but do you feel like what you guys do it here in Nebraska is sort of on the right side of the future of where the sport's going, not only at the NFL level, but at this level? I think that I think the problem maybe at the NFL level in terms of ride zone option and stuff like that, you know, you're paying a guy $4,000 million every half second. <laughs> And I don't know, you want him getting smoked by some defensive end who's twice as fast and maybe is 295 pounds, you know, that, I think that's probably the, the biggest limiting factor to them fully embracing a RPO right zone option with a quarterback's running. Now, the RPO aspect of it is, uh, I think, pretty dynamic and happening where, you know, he can either throw it or hand it off. But in terms of him being able to throw to run himself, man, I don't know. I think that's a limiting factor in terms of the money. Can you look at, can you point to those games when you're recruiting and say, they're going to what we're doing here? Like this whole thing of where it's got to be, you know, 17 10 and a West Coast offense, that's over. These are the best teams in the NFL, and they're, they're scoring 100 combined points. Can you, can you use that in recruiting to suggest to these kids what you can do here is going to translate there? Oh, in terms of their experience when they get there? Mm -hmm. Because I, they're moving to offenses yeah, I, that are a little bit yeah, more I, palatable to what you guys Yeah, I, I think so. And I, I, my own particular perspective with regards to a quarterback who comes from, quote, unquote, this style of system, if he's athletic and he's accurate and he's intelligent and he's hardworking, he'll be able to function within the framework of any offense. That's my own particular perspective about it. Um, but for the young guys, as you're asking, yeah, that's gonna that, that helps a little bit, I think. Yeah. I know you're trained on, on Iowa here for the next couple of days, but do you, do you already have your your list in mind of what you want, Adrian in particular, and your guys to, to work on once you get past Friday, spend the off season working on? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It, it, my little book that I got. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty cool. Well, there's just certain things that we just we just need to get better with, and you know it's like Coach Frost says, you know when you're when you're going through a, the teaching progression of doing ever X Y Z, you know you got to pick your spots and the things that are important that you need to get taken care of and take care of those, and then move on. Well, we got a big chunk taken care of. We got some more stuff left to do, and so I got that stuff written down. Scott said that on against Michigan State. Adrian played one of his better games. It clearly wasn't one of his better games statistically. Yes. Oh, do you feel that? Yes, I did. Why? I, I, well, uh, we were talking earlier, you know, the decisions. I thought he tried to push the game a little bit, maybe in the first half, and we talked about that. Uh, the other piece of the puzzle I knew was going to make sure that a game like that can get a quarterback frustrated. Don't get frustrated. Relax. It's, it's, it's going to happen. Somehow, some way, our defense is playing – their butts off, and somehow, some way, we're going to come through on this thing, right? Just stay relaxed and do your job. We talk more about that at halftime. Don't worry about anything, Adrian. This is the game we, we knew was going to. It was going to be a dogfight, right? It was going to be a punch each other in the face sort of game. Well, let's go. And so the decisions he made in, in, the, in the second half um, with regards to what he had to do from snap to snap in that environment, playing against that opponent, was for a young guy was re really, really good. Are some games more important for growth or, or cause more growth than others? And was that one of one? Yeah, you, he, you asked earlier, yeah, and those are important games from that standpoint. Don't get too high, don't get too low. Uh, the time to get emotional about one thing or another was when the game's over. You know, because you never know what's going to happen in the, during the course of a game. And look what ended up happening to us. You know, it was just tremendous. And he made a couple of throws that, that helped us, and which was important. But by and large, and even more important than that, was just the, the total decision-making that he that he had in the second half is was this, outstanding. Is this type of, is, could this be that type of game this yeah. week? Oh, the Iowa game? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I guess it depends on what the weather is going to be like. They're they're like Michigan State in a lot of ways in terms of their discipline and what they do and all of those sorts of things. You know, they're just hard nosed, right? 
Um, so it could end up being that style of game. Uh, and I've told the quarterbacks that's the game we're going to anticipate. Right? I mean, they're a hell of an opponent. And so uh, the Michigan State was probably good for us to go through. Is Noah ready to go? Uh, Noah is a bit injured right now. Okay. And so I don't know that he's going to be able to go at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, the part about kind of understanding the, the quarterback's role in, in the whole thing, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you talked about that over the summer. Yes. That's something you really hammer home for those guys, right? All, I mean, the, to, all, all the time. But, but does that go against what they've kind of been taught growing up, that you're the quarterback, you you, know, oh, you got to yeah, go out there yeah, and win the game? Yeah, we talked about that. I mean, they hear that all the time. They hear it since they were in maybe in eighth grade, you know, playing, and, you know, and Billy Schmatz won the game and all that sort of business. And they hear it in, in, in all sorts of different ways, even from their parents and their friends. So um, to get them to flip their mindset, I think when they hear the sorts of things we talk about and the way we talk about it and the perspective that, that we have, it, 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 it kind of gives them that sort of new perspective about the position, you know, yeah. from a functional standpoint. Because it's the, you know, it's the truth, really, you know. They're no more important than anybody else, functionally. Did Adrian get that pretty quickly, I guess, when you started talking about that? Yeah, he did, you know, and it was uh, – experience the first aspect was our spring game yeah. that was the first taste that he got that sort of thing and then obviously the first game as we moved through you know he started to understand that you know it, at the high school level it is a little bit different somewhat similar to the fact you know he was running the ball around in the Colorado game like he was in high school man you know where sometimes you're as big as linemen well this is that's not the case Man, this is college football now. So you have to fulfill your role in a different in a different way to your job and let the chips fall where they may. But he caught on that pretty quickly as most of the guys did. Yeah. I was looking through Adrian's completion numbers and the decision making stuff and it's, yeah. it's improved a lot over these last five compared to the first six. Sure. Picks are down. What do you what do you attribute? Is that just getting more reps, or what do you attribute that to? It, I attribute it to him becoming more comfortable with the experience he's having. We talked about this earlier. People talk about the game slowing down. Okay, that's I get that. But what ends up happening to a young guy is he's able to pick up more clues from the environment that are going to allow him to be faster with his decision making process. Things he may not even recognize that he's that he's seen. Is right that he's able to process and bang, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And or, oh, I've seen that before. So I think you put those sorts of things together and it adds up to what we perceive, you know, in terms of the numbers or his performance or whatever it might be. Yeah.